Hello everyone, here is a video on how to take apart the Asus Zenbook UX302L laptop. You will need a P5 or a Pentalope 5 uh, bit for your screwdriver because the small screws on the underside of the laptop are that uh, shape or dimension. So start by undoing the screws on the underside. So there are three screws that run along our pentalope screws that run along where the hinge is. So get those three. There are four screws along at the very front of the laptop. There are two screws either side in the middle and then there are two normal crosshead screws underneath the uh, back rubber feet. So this machine as you'll see when the video uh, progresses has almost certainly been opened up opened up by somebody else before. Um, the feet were missing and you'll see in when the machines opened up the uh, several screws are missing including some on the heatsink for the CPU. So that's all of the pentalope screws now undone. There are just these two screws by the hinge, which are normal small crosshead screws. So with all those undone, you should now just be able to lift off the cover with uh, very little resistance. If you get resistance or it feels like it's bending, then uh, you've probably forgotten to undo one of the screws. On mine, there was deforma uh, def deformation. <laughs> the, the back uh, hinge part was slightly deformed at one end, so uh, it had to be pulled out. Um, so where it should be, say, a gentle curve, it had been crushed so that it was basically clinging on at that end of the uh, the hinge. And model numbers of the underside panel if anyone needs it. Hopefully you can pause that video and zoom in and get the bits or the information you need. So now the cover is off, that gets you access to the battery, the hard disk, the RAM, the, there is a, an SSD or possibly a Optane memory for supposedly increasing the performance of a standard hard disk. The CPU fan, the CPU itself, which is a BGA array soldered onto the board so you can't replace it. On this one, as you can see, this machine's probably been opened up before. There are two screws missing for, for the heatsink. And I believe, I think the brackets below on the motherboard are also gone. Wi-Fi card, those are the speakers on either side. So the issue I was trying to troubleshoot was the machine was totally dead. You press the power button, absolutely nothing happens. So initially it's check whether there's voltage going across onto the motherboard. Which there is. Which then leads you on to the worrying point of maybe the motherboard has failed or a component on the motherboard has failed, uh, or possibly even given that the CPU is missing uh, a screw, uh, two screws that that could have blown up or something similar. However, it turns out to be much simpler than that. When somebody had previously opened up this machine, they must not have properly reconnected the keyboard. That little bit of plastic that was at 90 degrees angled was not clipped down, so the ribbon was just free floating inside the laptop.
and now the laptop switch is on. So in my case, the machine not switching on was the super simple, the keyboard wasn't connected, which meant, then meant when you pressed the power button, that signal wasn't getting through to the motherboard to turn the machine on. The other thing that had happened on this machine, again, when somebody must have previously opened it up to repair it, and why I'm having such trouble opening and closing this laptop, um, is that where I'm poking now, the two screws that remain on the hinge are underneath the lap, uh, underneath the hinges. They're not being used to hold the uh, the hinges on to the bracket. I'm going to undo those two remaining screws and then move them back to where they should be. And because I'm moving the motherboard around and the case around, I don't really want to accidentally make contact with something and uh, short it out, so I've unplugged the battery. Something I didn't notice while repairing it, but while I can see this video now, is it also looks like the touch screen uh, is smashed or the, the layer over the LCD panel is smashed as well, um, which probably explains why when I thought it should be touch and I was touching the screen, nothing was happening. So that's one side of the hinges has been uh, the two screws which were underneath the hinge have been unscrewed and uh, now trying to line it back up and put the screw back in. And then the second screw also back in. So that will now mean that the hinge is held on when the cover isn't on by three screws and then probably once the cover is back on that will also put another screw through that uh, point and hold it on with four screws. Um, so previously <laughs> while the cover was on it was only held on by half of the screws it should have been and when the cover was off it was only held on by one screw when it should have been held in by three. So it's time to do the same on the other side. Okay, so that is all of the screws back in now, although I think one of them has got a stripped thread as well, so, so actually I think the that side hinge was not even being held in with a screw at all, it was being held in by a loose bit of metal going into a stripped screw hole. We can plug the battery back in because I've finished moving stuff around that might uh, make a uh, short out. keyboard backlight connector next to the keyboard connector which also wasn't um, locked down. Somebody did an incredibly terrible job previously repairing this laptop. Now we're done, just need to put the case back on and screw all the screws back in.
And there we go, let's press the power button. Keyboard backlight now works this time. And the machine turns on and boots up. Great success. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much.